I'm really looking forward to this to this next minister. Um, because the reason why I'm looking forward to this was that um, remember in uni we had this wave that came on and mm. everybody was trying because I, I, my pastor then was was talking about gifts and talent. Mm. He was asking everybody that yes, you know, there's a gift in everyone. You know, there's different ways of ministering to God or to people. You know, you could be through drama. I chose drama then. You know, there were people who were singing. And then there were people who were poets, amen. Mm -hmm. And and you know when you listen to words, words are very powerful. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says what it says. It said there's power in our mouth. Mm -hmm. That means when words come out, mm -hmm. Hallelujah, it is established. It said my words will never come back void. So that means words are very powerful. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So. I am really, really looking forward to this minister. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So yes. please let's give a living round of applause. Thank you so much for inviting me here. Um, I'm always blessed and just God bless you all. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, yeah, so um, basically, you know, I've been planning this um, sermon today. Um, so as you can see from my clothing, um, I design clothes, um, and it's for saints, as we are all saints, for the kingdom of God, amen? Amen. So um, it's very important, I just want to open up with this, is never to be ashamed of the gospel, because as what our holy, holy Lord Jesus Christ has said, if we are ashamed of him, he will be ashamed of us. Amen. So what always kept me in my life when I was growing up, because, you know, I'm still young, and I know what it's like to live in London, you know, and there's so much um, pressure out there for young people. But you know what always kept me in line? Two things. The fact that God loved me. Yeah. God loves you. Yes. Okay? And number two is hell. Hell is a real place. Mm. Okay? So the youths nowadays are going around killing people, having so much anger in their heart, but they need to know those two things. They know they need to know that Jesus loves them. Mm. Jesus died for them. He suffered it all on the cross to give them eternal life. And they need to know that if they make this mistake, and if God says that's it, you're going to die, they're going to hell. Hell is a real place. So this needs to be preached a lot more. And I know that it's a very uncomfortable subject for most people, but if you are okay, if you, if you, if you have come to terms with hell and you know, I'm good with God, I pray every day, I check my life every day, you know, we make little sins, okay, God understands that, but obviously not big gigantic sins. God doesn't expect us to live out the same sin every day, but we are normal. You know, we have to live and breathe and, you know, work. And God understands the pressures of life. But so many people are dying every day. I mean, just, I don't want to mention names, but I'm sure you all know who I'm talking about. A recent uh, guy, he died recently. A famous uh, rapper, you know, he was on the way to the gig and he died. That's it. He's living his dream. So many of these pop stars out there are influencing the youth. Women going around half naked, That's thinking right. about it's okay to dress like this. Mm -hmm. But we can't judge these people. We have to love them. Mm -hmm. The same as the Lord, when the lady um, was committing adultery, and the Lord said, who's without sin, cast the first stone. So we need to always think that in our mind. We can't look at these people and think, oh, look at them. No, we have to pray for them and, and pray to God that these people come to know who Jesus is. Because, you know, we can go any time. When Jesus says, that's it, too late. It's too late. We have the chance now. We have the chance now. So when I wear my clothing, I'm not doing it for fashion. I don't wear fashion. I do it because I love Jesus. And I want everybody to know how much I love him. And how much he loves us all. Amen? Amen. So, um, thank you. <laughs> I wanted to actually say, um, when I came, when we were um, singing songs, 
Because when you go to um, a lot of you know conferences, they have the big bands and you know the guitars and you know the drums and everything. I mean, there's there's great great music out there, great gospel music out there. Right. But when we were singing, like when this gentleman was singing a cappella, and when my mom was singing, and when we were all singing. You know what I felt? I felt like we were there meeting the Lord. I could see his light. I could see his light there. You know? it, was, it was just, it was amazing. Like, I, I couldn't, it was just a very supernatural thing at that moment. And I was like, I could picture the Lord walking past all his saints and looking at them all and just saying, I'm here, I'm with you. I could literally see the angels appearing. I couldn't tell you what they looked like, but I could just feel the presence of God. I feel the presence of God in the room. He's here right now. He's literally here right now. And that's what some church, uh, some common places are missing. Because they focus too much on the melody. They focus too much on how the sermon is going to be approached. They focus on how fancy shoes they have. I mean, it's nice to have nice things. God doesn't want us to be miserable. He wants us to have lovely things. But what they are forgetting is the substance of the word. big massive bands, we don't have fancy singers coming from all over the world making money, we don't need that because God has given us the melody already in the way we speak, in the way we look, in the way we talk God gives us everything so um, I'm just going to do, um, I'm going to show you two things, so this is called um, The Passport for Heaven it's by, it's written by um, Brother Dr. Banda um, he is a Bible scholar, Bible translator. Uh, so he spent his whole life, you know, um, serving God, and he still serves God to this day. Amen. Amen. And uh, I will be speaking from this book also. Uh, so then there's a track here, and uh, I actually wrote this when I was a little girl, and it's called God's Judgment. So um, I was basically, this is a dream that I had. And before that, after that, actually, I was walking on the road. I want you to imagine and picture this in your head. You're walking along the road, and all of a sudden, you're crossing the road, and you see a van is coming at you. Mm. At that moment, I knew that's it. I experienced that. And what happened is, is that I end up from one bus stop to another. And I woke up on the street, I was crying. The first thing I said was, God, God, help me. The second person I asked for was my mom. So imagine I've just been run over by a transit van at the age of 11, 12, 11 years old. And I'm thinking, that point is when that's it. Your life is gone in an instant. So when I go back to this person who died recently, and then there's another person. So many people are dying, guys. But what happened to me is that I came out of that accident with a scratch on my leg. No bones broken. But you know why? Because my mom was late. And I was angry. And I said, why was she late? But then the Lord said to me, don't you realize your mother was praying for you, mm. on her knees praying for you. Mm. And God said to her, no bones broken. And she knew when she stepped into that um, theatre room, my daughter is fine. And I was fine. And you know what? I was asking for KFC. <laughs> and everyone was looking, saying, oh my gosh. But you know who was there? My dad was there. My dad was there, and he had to see that. But when you have a good mum like I have, I'm here today because of her prayers. Yeah. And that's what to know that you are here because you have a praying mom, a praying yes. dad, yes. and our holy Lord Jesus Christ, yes. who is keeping you safe. Yes. So if you have faith in God, and if you really want to make a difference in the world, you just think about what the Lord Jesus had done, and make sure you want to tell every single person out there, hey, you may be living the life now, but if God takes you, that's it. Your soul is in hell forever. Yes. So I'm a witness to that. 
So I'm just going to read um, about, I'm just going to read what I wrote. So it says, The Dream. I've seen by a ten-year-old girl on Friday the 8th of October. Judgment Day. God was showing me this man. He got judged by God, and this is what God said to him. Depart from me, he cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. I was scared. Then I saw the same man go down into the slope of hell. When I saw it, I cried, Ah, Lord, get me out of here. Don't worry, I am with you, said God. So when I woke up in the middle of the night, I was crying and I was like, what, 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 what is this? What am I seeing? And so as I was um, basically in my room, I woke up and I told mom about it. And so I ended up going through like a portal and I ended up in the sky. And there was somebody holding my hand, a very, very tall figure that I couldn't see. And it was like, I can't describe it, it's like a force of light, like, like this, like this, I can't explain it. And this force was holding me all the way through the universe, I could see the clouds, I could see the stars, I could see every single thing. So, I thought it was the I thought it was an angel, but the Lord had revealed it to me, it was actually the Lord himself mm. that took me and held my hand and took me around to see these places. So, the angel was holding my hand softly. The angel was so tall, I had to speak with my neck right up. So when people say they've seen God, they've seen Jesus Christ, be very careful, make sure you listen to, it has to comply with the scripture. I haven't seen God's face, I haven't seen the Lord's face, because we don't know what God looks like. That's how you see all these, um, you know, these pictures of these, you know, Roman Catholicism, and they say this is how Jesus looks like. We don't know what Jesus looks like. Sure. That is an idol. So make sure we stay away. We let people know, especially Christians, to stop having these fake pictures. Because I already had a dream, and God told me that is not me. We don't know what Jesus looks like. Amen. 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 So I couldn't really explain His force. His force is like, whoosh, like that. That's all I can describe. So he's taking me around. Then all of a sudden, I'm in the beauty, I see all the universe, I see everything. But how I was taken from the first location, I was stuck underground. There had been a train accident or something, and I had been stuck underground, and a light had pushed me out, had pulled me out. Then I ended up in the sky, I was seeing everything, all the beautiful earth, everything that God created. Two, falling all the way down. All the way down. So, I had to speak with my neck right up. And I look and I'm in total darkness. There isn't anything just dark. Black, black, I don't see anything. I mean, it was the most experience, <laughs> experience I've ever experienced in my whole life. So the smell was nasty, I couldn't breathe. There was sulfur and coals, it was pure darkness. And I could see tiny people screaming. just screaming people and I'm only a little girl like I'm young you know this is how God God speaks to the young God speaks to the youth remember that God loves you God loves you so I was looking down and I couldn't understand where I was even I was like what am I doing here and imagine everything is just all black and I'm very young I'm a teenager so don't think that God God chastises the young as well you know, he is a righteous God and he is a fair God. So I'm seeing all these people and um, I could see smoke and everything. And uh, I was looking up and I said, I feel sick and the smell of chalk and I couldn't breathe and I was suffering. I was feeling, the, I was feeling hell. I was seeing it there. And I was only little. I was like, why am I seeing this? Like, I'm young, like, I shouldn't be here, you know. And it was God saying to me, this is where people are going to come to if they do not repent from their sins, if they do not accept Jesus Christ, if they do not change their way. Every single person is going to hell. They're going to be here for eternity. There is no way out. There is no way out. So all I heard was, have you had enough? 
And that was God saying to me, have you had enough of this? But there was a time when, in the same place, he was there with me, and he wasn't there. And I was on my own in hell, standing amidst the lake of fire. I was literally just standing on a ledge, and there's just fire and furnace just everywhere. And it's just pure black. Pure, pure black. There isn't anything else. So that's basically what the Bible says is what it is. There is no sugarcoating it. There's no adding, there's no adding any special effects or any demons or nothing. It's just black. Just pure black. That's it. And then, because of God and his mercy, he says, I am with you, said God. I'm still with you. But I have to show you this. Because you, as a teenager, as a little girl, need to tell people that hell is a real place. Amen. So then he took me out, and there were two waiting rooms. In the middle of the sky, right? Two glass boxes in the sky. In the middle of the sky. So there was one waiting room where you just wait. And the other waiting room had lots of books, so there was lots of books, and guess what was in the middle? The Book of Life. Mm. In massive, like, you can't explain how big this book is. And then I saw this lady there. She looked like very normal, a bit funky looking. She had like this spiky hair and stuff. And uh, she says, would you like a cup of tea? And I said, uh, I'll be allowed tea in here. But what I think that is, I think it's when, when we come to reign on the earth and God gives us jobs to do. So I think this lady had a job and her job was to Check the way to The thing is, is that you would expect everything to be so scary and everything, but it's actually all very normal. It's like a, it's like another town. It's like another place. It's, it's a very, it's a very strange experience. And so, I was there, and there was a big, massive waiting room. And in the other room, there was another room. And what I saw was another room and a massive light, just full, full of light in one other room. And the angel said, that's where the Lord is. That's his office. He's there. He's there with the angels. Is your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life? Is your name? Ask yourself that question. He said, is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? So sorry, now I'm going on a bit too much. <laughs> and then I saw two groups of people. The first was waiting to be judged, and the others was non-believers. And the other group was for our works to be judged. So all our works that we are doing is going to be judged. God is going to judge our works. Amen. So that's just a little extract of the track, and then um, if you're interested, I can print some out for you, and um, you can give in your churches, Amen. or we can give here, of course. So I'm just going to say a few verses, um, just of the passport for heaven. So, do you all have a ticket? Yes, we do. So, this passport is the property of the royal kingdom of heaven, of King Jesus. The King of Kings, creator and sustainer of the planet. Isaiah 9, verse 5 to 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So, I'm just going to talk about hell, and there's a couple of scriptures there. Hell was designed originally for Satan and his demons. Matthew, Levi, 25, verse 41, and Revelation 20, verse 10. And the devil who had deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they shall be tormented day and night, forever and ever. So when people talk about, oh, why would God send somebody to hell? Actually, hell is for the devil and his angels, it's not meant for humans. So, sad that man made wrong views of hell. 
Okay. So if you want to know anything more about this book, um, you can purchase it from me. Um, it's four pounds, so it's quite a relative um, good price. Um, and I just wanted to actually read some quotes here from the last people who had died on their deathbed and they didn't know Jesus. And this is actually real accounts of people. So um, there's one gentleman called Brown. Devils are in the room, ready to drag my soul to hell. It's no use. Looking for Jesus now, it's too late. So, um, please do have a look. It's called The Passport of the Royal Kingdom of Heaven of King Jesus, our Creator. So, I'm just going to read a quick... I don't know if I have time. I don't know how long I've got left. Sorry? Oh, we're out of time. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just going to read the last scripture, and it's on Luke 23, verse 34. King Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. In the midst of this extra, extra, uh, excruciating suffering, mm. the, king, the heart of King Jesus was focused on others rather than himself. Here we see the nature of his love, his unconditional and divine. So thank you so much. Amen. 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 Amen.